If you could make almost anything, what would you do? I would believe very strongly there's a kind of a dignity in making things. Fabrication is being digitized and becoming personal. This is the craft of our century. Fab Labs are about digital fabrication, which means you can design something and then a robotic machine will make it, bring it into life. It provides the means to create what you consume. It includes a 3D printer, a precision machine that can make electronic circuits. Fab Labs are in, we believe, about 75 to 80 countries, doubling in size every, say, 12 to 18 months. Probably the best single toy that mankind has ever invented. Where can they now make a societal impact, just like it is done in Kenya, Rwanda, India, China, the floating fab lab down the Amazon that they're trying? Putting a fab lab in a refugee camp provides creation and bootstrapping. It fits in a shipping container. It's a pretty cheap and efficient way to build relatively robust housing for refugee scenarios. It's not hard to find people who want to pay for one lab. What's harder is sort of creating the network that makes it all possible. It's been a problem trying to expand the network in Ghana. The more fab labs we have in a particular location, the better the chances of reaching people. Very often we say, oh, you know, the world is moving so fast and everybody, technology is so advanced. It's not advanced everywhere. It's not advanced with everyone. People who come in as novice are able to capture and make use of the tools and equipment within a short period of time. Fab labs are used exactly the same everywhere. They're used for play, for entertainment, for education, for creating businesses. When we introduced the lab, like people started trying new things and now some users, they are making profit out of it. The person who worked in the lab showed me how my drawings can be translated and we've made a couple of 3D prints. This way I can make uh, my work much, much larger, and that way I was able to create large-scale permanent public art. To use it as a space where you can bring divided communities together. We can connect people to work with Jewish and Arab together. And you see that when you make things, people don't think about religion. They only think about how to make it and collaborate. As much as anything, the social engineering is almost more important than the technical engineering. We expect uh, for these to be a vehicle to develop projects uh, that are actually addressing the two big issues that we are facing today. One is the social crisis we have in the inequality of distribution of resources and also the dependence that we have as consumers of other supply chains. Give to the people the power to make things, not only to buy it. We like to create the conditions to empower the people and to empower the community. Aquaponics is self-sufficiency regarding to food to grow the same lettuce, let's say, in conventional agriculture and in aquaponics, you have a difference of 95%, which has a huge impact in the context of resource efficiency. It's going to get faster, better, cheaper. Using tools in Fab Labs to build more tools that can do other stranger things commoditizing of those resources that I, I think is a real game changer. We should take pride in the technology that we own, that we make, and we should take pride in our own ability to create those things. If we produce things more locally while we are connected globally, then we'll create new society. It doesn't just simply address the root causes of inequality, it really fundamentally changes that discussion from money and jobs to creation.